Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day, and having done everything, to hold your ground. So stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness as a breastplate, and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and supplication, Pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the holy ones and also for me, that speech may be given to me, may be given me to open my mouth, to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains so that I may have the courage to speak as I must. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. My mercy and my fortress my stronghold, my deliverer, in my shield in whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. Let Blessed be the Lord, my God. God. O God, I will sing a new song to you. With a set ten-stringed lyre, I will chant your praise, you who give victory to kings, and deliver David, your servant, from the evil sword. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, Lord my God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to those to whom his favor rests. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away, leave this area, because Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons, and I perform healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I accomplish my purpose. Yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how many times I yearned to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house will be abandoned, but I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we're, we're nearing towards the end of the liturgical year. We're hitting week 30 out of 34 before we hit uh, the end of the liturgical year and then begin Advent and start the whole thing all over again. So when we hit this point in the readings, uh, you can tell the conflict that's going on. Uh, the spiritual war that is being picked up, the battle is getting ready. So that first reading from Paul, his letter to the Ephesians, put on all of this armor, get ready for battle, and uh, remember who we are really fighting against. And then Jesus um, showing that even though there's this earthly guy who wants to try to kill him, Herod, uh, you know, that's not the real enemy that we're dealing with here. Behold, I am ready to go into battle, I need to be killed, uh, and on the third day I will be raised. Jesus understands we need to get into our thick skulls. <laughs> that our real enemies, we only have two of them. What? Yes, we only have two enemies. If you haven't heard this, it's really, really helpful. Do you know what the two enemies are? Anybody want to guess? Sin is one of them. There you go. I don't know who that was, but give him a gold star. Great. Who is, what's, the other, what's the other enemy that we have besides sin? First read. Our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, powers, rulers of the present darkness, evil spirits in the heavens. What do you think? Audience participation is necessary today. Like the wrong one being hell? Well, uh, I don't know if I heard all everything you said there, but yeah. no, nope, not death. Death is the result of sin, right? The wage of sin, that's the first enemy. The wage of sin is death. Satan. So Satan is what? What is he? The, the name Satan is means accuser. Satan is a fallen angel. And when we keep that clear in our mind, the real enemies are our sin that separates us from God and the demons who are, who are angels whose responsibility it was to help us be united to God and have everything of God's kingdom be in order. They rebelled against that and they are now are trying to get out of order any person, any soul that would have an opportunity to be rescued by God. So, um, I don't know if I've given this part of the homily here at this location, so I'll just do it in case I haven't. It's always good. In the beginning, when God creates the world, and I'll try to do this fast, because it's a lot, uh, God creates the world, you know, we can hypothesize where in the process God would have made the angels. It's probably let there be light, and then the angels come into existence. They are not bound by time like you and I are. So they don't have to, over a period of time, work themselves up to making a choice about whether they're on God's side or not. 
They can just simply, they know everything and they can make a decision. They don't know everything, everything like God, but God grants them full vision of everything outside of time. So they are able to make an eternal decision full, full, with full knowledge and make their decision. God explains, I am perfect. You are the most perfect created beings, my angels. The most perfect. And there's a being with all of the rest of creation that's created underneath. There's one being at the top, the pinnacle of the rest of creation called human beings that I am going to make. And when I make them, I want you to understand they will, that you are perfect spirit. They will be perfect in their spirit, so to speak, and they will have bodies. They will be embodied spirits. And I'm going to place them within time and grant them the opportunity that although they are created underneath you, I am going to become one of them and I'm going to raise those human beings above you, the more perfect being. And so I'm asking you, I'm giving you all of these individual responsibilities of everything in the universe. I'm asking you to serve those lesser beings because I'm going to become one of them and to help them enter into divine life with me. And they are going to have time, these human beings are going to have time to be able to do all of this. Well, some of them, I mean, I don't know what it's like for you, but just think of your worst day when you suddenly realize somebody else gets to be picked ahead of you. If you've ever been picked last on the basketball team, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Ruin your life for the day, right? And just the utter anger and frustration. How dare you, God, become, how would you lower yourself to become one of them? Especially when... You give them the opportunity over a period of time to be with you and then not be with you and be with you and then not be with you and then maybe even just reject you altogether. How can you, how can you choose to do that? And they have such disdain and anger, a third of them fell out of the life of grace with God. And thus they're depicted as ugly, gnarly, gross beings, right? But they're spiritual. They have no bodies like we do. Okay, so you come back to Understanding then, we have only two enemies. Our sin, which can separate us from God and that relationship of am I with him or am I not? Or the demons who have nothing better to do than to try to drag us down. They, just, they simply do not want God's plan to succeed. And they know on some level, some souls are saints and they make it. And by God's grace, the rest of them go through that purgative process in purgatory and join along with Jesus. And so if they can just drag down one more soul and upset one more apple cart and make one more family break apart and have one more nation war against another and allow it that we would have, you know, we pollute ourselves to, into infinity or bomb each other internationally because of hatred for one another. When we get fixated on, you're my enemy, you're my enemy, you're my enemy, instead of keeping clear who the, the true enemies are, my sin and those evil powers and principalities that are trying to drag my soul down. So, you're on my team, you're on my team, you're on my team, and I don't want any soul left behind. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. That description of heaven is the ultimate divine life. You understand then that you can't be in heaven and still be like a demon. That has to be weeded out of us. That has to be purified in us. And how radically outrageous it is that this in infinite being of God who is outside space and time, would choose to enter into space and time, see us in our sinfulness and our brokenness, because we've rebelled against him, Adam and Eve, right, their story. And he would choose to raise you and I above the angels at some point. That our souls are going to be above the angels. Baptism does that. And our bodies just have to catch up. 
So we have to learn to love our neighbor as ourself. To love even our enemies. Well, in this case, it's a play on words, isn't it? To love all of our partners in the process, who we think are our enemies but are actually on the same team. And is it possible that we would choose with our lives to cooperate with the demons and to ruin God's plan and become selfish and throw our, up, our inheritance out like the prodigal son who says, just give me what I want now. I don't, I don't want the inheritance with you. Give it to me now and go away into nothingness. Uh, all of that is very real. And so when, when we understand that, okay, you know, go to hell, but you've got to go to heaven before you finish the homily, Father. Okay. Uh, remember now, like the whole goal here then is that we're trying to work together to be saved by Christ into eternal life. And so we are nourished with his body and blood. We are uh, baptized first and foremost, right? And given that grace, freedom from original sin, that baby that we hold in the church after we've had the baby baptized, we then tell the parents, here's the white garment. Bring this garment, your soul, unstained into everlasting life in heaven. So our goal is then to live sinless the rest of our life. So what is Paul saying through this? Stand fast with your loins girded in truth, that which is true, with righteousness being in right relationship with God, uh, in readiness for the gospel of peace, which means I'm at peace with you, I'm at peace with you, I'm interested in your soul getting to heaven, your soul, I don't care what you do to me, I'm going to love you back in return. In all circumstances, hold faith. I believe that God did send his son and died on the cross for my sins so that I could have life with him and have it abundantly. Have that faith as a shield all those flaming arrows of the evil one are blocked by my faith. They don't get to me. That helmet of salvation, sword of the Holy Spirit, the word of God, prayer, supplication, to be watchful with perseverance and supplication for the holy ones and, and also for Paul and all those who speak the truth. We're in this together. Christ is with us. He nourishes us, forgives us our sins, uh, anoints us in, in our bodies, gets us ready for a divine life with himself. And when you know who you're fighting against and the fact that we have these weapons, the Catholic Church makes sense. The Catholic Church makes a ton of sense. The rosary, everything we do in prayer, the communion of saints, the belief in the Eucharist, it's fantastic. Fantastic to believe in what we believe. So let's once again make that act of faith. Enter into the Mass, trust in Jesus, enter into communion with Him, ask for forgiveness of our sins if we need to, and receive divine life with Him. Stand. bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and pray for our bishops, that they can remind us who the true enemies of our sin and the evil one and all the evil spirits, how to reject those and to be united with Christ in all things, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We uh, pray for all those who are struggling in their sins these days, those whose lives are feeling hopeless in any way, those who feel lonely, lost, or discouraged, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for uh, all those who are sick, those who are in hospice care, those who are going through rehabilitation of any kind, those who are seeking mental health treatments. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died and gone before us in faith, we pray for the person for whom this Mass is offered today and for the next person in our community whom the Lord will call to himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for entering into humanity through your Son, Jesus, and that he would die on the cross for our sins. 
that we might be saved by him so that we can share in divine life with you. We ask that you would hear all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.